Superman and Lois season three, episode 10. This is officially in the final four episodes. So here we go. No renewal. Every other superhero with Jason thing at the CW is looking like it's going to be getting kicked off the network. So who knows what is going to happen with this show. It would be a shame to lose it. That being said, I don't know how big the numbers are. The CW is very weird with their numbers. They're lower than a lot of other major networks, but that's still good for them because they're not like a big network. It's very strange. All I'm saying is there have been shows of worse numbers that have lasted longer than what this is, but with the whole brand shift, it doesn't matter. We don't need to talk about this today. I did an entire video talking about the CW a couple days ago. Like We don't need to talk about this. It is just interesting that this is the final holdover and that it, it's still not really sure what it's doing for the season. I've been having a couple of less than great thoughts about the past couple of episodes. I think there's been stuff in them that I've liked a lot. This one really tested my patience for a bit where I'm like, okay, this feels like we're stalling to get the episode count. But then at the same time, it also did something I've waited three seasons for, and that is just have Kyle completely lose his mind. Kyle supporter, always been a supporter of Kyle, my favorite character on this show. There are characters called Superman and Lois Lane in this Superman and Lois show, and I'm here for Kyle. And this episode kind of opens with Kyle just talking to his girlfriend Chrissy like, you know what you should put in your newspaper? These weird icicle things I keep finding in these places. And what I love about this episode is that it just turns into every single person gaslighting Kyle for a minute. And we'll get back to that, but I do want to talk about the other stuff first because Lois has her last treatment of chemo. And it worked and she's getting better and we're happy for it, but... Doesn't feel like there's been anything else to that, really. You know, it's like, she's sick. She was bad for a bit. Now she's getting better. So, yeah, I guess it's an arc. But it also feels like it's an arc that is happening in the span of, like, months. And doesn't feel like it's had any true, like, staying power. Like, tested us as an audience where we're, like, waiting for something to happen. It's, it's a hard thing. And I, I said this weeks ago, and I'll continue to say it. It is a hard thing to do for an entire season is have one of your leads deal with like a huge intensive cancer story because you can never authentically pull that off. There are moments in the show where they did. There is stuff in here that I liked with them doing it, but then they immediately just be like, okay, yeah, she's probably going to move back upstairs with Clark now and she's just going to go help her dad deal with the Pia situation, which is, which is what she does. And well, I think that's a very Lois Lane thing to do and I can appreciate that. We are moving pretty fast <laughs> and i'm like okay we're not even gonna like dwell in the fact that she's better she gets better goes back to work which again very low is but i think there's a, a lack of authenticity to like the we're going i'm my chemo worked i'm going back to help you that is very fast and sudden when it happened that way there's also like another kind of like subplot for this episode that is clark going to spend time with his kids and then john and jordan like not wanting to spend time with their dad. There's a really cute moment where Clark's like, hey, we're going to go see wrestle stuff, buddy. What do they call it? it? I don't know. But Clark's got like his favorite wrestler. Just the enthusiasm of a dad wanting to hang out with his teenage sons, getting no response back from them. Because what are the kids wanting to do? They want to go to a senior party. And look, I get that these kids look like they're 16, right? Clearly, John, Jordan, and Sarah are all 16. I don't know why, but the seniors look younger than these than these people. I'm like, what? What are we doing? What a weird casting choice. But it's very strange. It all kind of starts because Sarah gets an invite from Junior, who's like the mayor's son. Like, hey, do you want to hang out at the senior party? And then John finds out about it, and he thinks Candace can come down to see it. And Jordan's like, Sarah's gonna be there. We're gonna continue like playing this really weird dramatic beat that i'm in love with sarah it is exhausting at this point i get what they're trying to do but jordan and sarah do not have the clark and lois thing you cannot authentically have that with teenagers in 2023 so it's not coming across as working properly nonetheless we deal with it quick <laughs> and jordan will learn his lesson but what happens immediately is, because they're having this party at like a, what, like a, where are they? <laughs> it's like a weird, like, metal railings everywhere. The cops show up and they all have to flee. But they're seniors, right? So they should be out. No, because in America, you have to be 21 to drink. 
I'm from a province in Canada where you can drink at 18 years old and nobody gives a shit. <laughs> so I guess I'm just used to a senior party being a bunch of drunk kids. <laughs> so that I guess that makes sense. But Sarah's kind of drunk. Well, she's kind of drunk. We say loosely. And she gets in. Was it? Her? Yeah, it's her car because she needs to get Junior out of there. So they start fleeing. And they keep the lights off so the cops don't see them. And then they go down like a back road. She almost hits a deer. F flips the car and like, what is the worst CG of the episode? But I get it. Why would you spend the time on that? They get saved by Jordan. And immediately Junior's like, we were saved by a super person. Which leads into more gaslighting at Kyle. Because when he comes to find his daughter, we now had Chrissy lied to him. And then... Now Sarah's lying to him, and then when Lana talks to them, she's gaslighting him. Everybody is gaslighting Kyle, and I'm here for it. Give him something to do. We finally did. We finally did, and it worked. And there's like a sub story with like Chrissy and Lana, and they have to like meet a governor of the the pro like Kansas. Was that what it is? I don't know. And she's like. You're doing good, Lana, but God forbid you come from, like, a, a marriage that didn't work out and your daughter's acting like a teenager. I, like, that kind of shit really bothers me, especially when it's, like, so fundamentally surface level. Where it's like, <laughs> I heard your ex-husband's shacking up with some younger broad. Like, what is this? What kind of gossipy bullshit are you talking about? You're the governor. Why are you talking like this dumbass? And I just hate people that are, like, judging parents for something that the kid clearly did that doesn't have any bearing on the way they raised their kid. That shit pisses me off. Sarah crashing the car has nothing to do with Alana's parenting. It was just a fluke. You know, it, it's so annoying. And I just, I hated all that stuff. It was so frustrating. And we don't get, like, the resolution of, like, the governor figuring out that Chrissy might actually be, like, the side piece that Kyle's shacking up with. It's very frustrating. And I just went, yeah, okay, you you got to do this with Lana. But it just leads to them gaslighting Kyle some more. And that's what I'm here for. I just like that stuff. We also have a couple of things with the DOA where we're going to let Mateo see his mother. That turns into him injecting her with, like, the serum from the Bizarro Superman so she can gain her powers back and get free. And she kind of, like, blackmails Lois into letting her get out. I like all that stuff. That's a really good use of the character. It's doing something kind of fun. Just wrecking the DOA sets. I'm always here for that. That's really good. And then we have a little bit of a conversation about Lex Luthor. And he's been talked about so much this season. We I just saw confirmation he's going to show up in the last two episodes maybe. Which, okay, fine. We'll probably tease him at the end of Eleven next week and we can get on with our lives. But... He is, the, what I think they're doing really well is like using him as like the overarching threat that we're not experiencing at every moment. So his presence is actually going to be scary because he's been in prison for 17 years, 17 years. This is not the Lex Luthor we are going to be familiar with. He's going to be big, scary, and tough. And that's kind of exciting. But you see a little conversation. I love this conversation where Lois and Superman are talking about like, well, maybe we should leave Lex in prison because he is a bad person. But Clark is like, well, that's not for us to decide. If he was framed, then we have to release that evidence and the world can decide that. Which I really, I really like. I really like that. Because that is a Superman analogy and something Superman's going to deal with. I love that. It makes me so happy. So on board with that stuff. And it's all fun, you know, John yelling at his dad, like, we can't just wait for you every second of our lives if you want to hang out and we have to do other stuff. I don't get to see Candace at all. I can see you anytime and sometimes you just leave. That's all good. And I'm glad for all of that stuff. But like I said at the top of the episode, this is all about Kyle Cushing, my favorite character in this show. Because he finally figured it all out. Dude's been connecting dots. He's been gaslit by every single woman in his life. He finally figured it out. What was going on? Why John ran to that burning building? John has powers. He has confirmed that Jonathan Kent has powers. He's figured it out. He comes screaming down to the Kent farm. Shouting at everybody. 
tells Clark, like, get the hell out of my way. I know what your son is. John is a freak with powers. And as he's doing that, is it is when Pia is attacking the DOA and holding Lois hostage. So we have a tension rising situation, and we finally do something I'm glad we are doing. We're addressing the Kyle of it all. Because he is the last main cast member unaware of the antics going on in this town. But he got it all. He's like all this shit was happening when your family moved here, Kent. Like, I, I, I'm figuring it out. And he tries to just, like, shove Clark back. Like, I gotta, I gotta talk to your son. But Clark pushes him aside of two fingers. And that's when he's like, I'll explain everything to you later, Kyle, but I gotta go. And he booms up into the sky. And we do hold on Kyle long enough to have us think he is aware of what just happened. Now... We don't get a reaction from Kyle after that. He just looks up into the sky and sees something. Does he know? <laughs> Does he know? Do, did, are we confirming that Kyle figured something out that they're going to tell him? If we don't open up next week's episode of Kyle just being like, what the fuck? What are we doing? You know? He's my boy. And the fact that he figured it out on his own, had it connect to one of the Kents, he's closer than most were. <laughs> And he's just a guy, so that's pretty impressive, you know? My boy did it. He figured it out. And I think he knows. I think he knows. And that's really exciting. And yeah, it's cool. Lois deals with the stuff. Pia has some things going on. The Sarah and Jordan stuff, whatever. But my boy Kyle, he has pictures he is giving to his reporter girlfriend, showing him and the world that he knows what's up. And you know what? He was halfway right. And that's really cool. And I'm happy for him. And now we got three episodes left. And I hope it's not the end of the show. But who's to say? Who's to say? But that's going to do it for this review of Superman and Lois. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.